So if you want to do a better job at spotting some lies, maybe you need to do like they do in Star Trek. Two lies to beam up. Energize. <laughs> Stay tuned for tip 85. Welcome back. I'm Stan Walters, your host for 101 Tips for Interviewing and Interrogation. Interviewing tip number 85. Okay, I know it's a little hokey, but actually there's a little bit to that energized process. If you want the life signs to stand out, we have to be more diligent and more proficient at energizing those points where the subject may be deceptive. Now, this is following on some research of Dr. Albert Vry, uh, Ron Fisher, Aleel, uh, Dr. Ray Bull, and they were looking at how to energize lie signs, make them more obvious. So seven things to keep an account here for. First of all, we're talking about the difference, and it specifically goes back to what we've been, been teaching for quite some time now in this whole series, difference between an accusatory style and an information gathering style or a narrative-based style interview. An accusatory style interview, you're, you're uh, driving the subject into a situation. You're saying, we've got this, we have that, we've got so-and-so, your position is untenable, resistance is futile. Again, to go back to quote the Borg from, from, from Star Trek. Okay? okay, I know I'm stuck on a Star Trek thing. We'll get over that. Okay? But in accusatory style, what they have found doesn't energize the lie signs. And often the interviewer has a couple of problems. Number one, you're contaminating the subject. But number two, you're not necessarily hitting the right spots. The subject's anticipating or will anticipate many of those questions. And it does not increase cognitive load. Go back and look at our series and look for the video on cognitive load. Well, an information gathering process puts a great deal of cognitive load on a deceptive subject. Because now it's just not one single question in which there may or may not be any type of energized behavior. But if you put the subject on the spot and now they've got to start filling in, creating and sustaining some form of deception and your follow on questions, that's what's causing the lie signs to stand out. Not only verbal, but also some nonverbal stress cues are being generated at the same time. So look in your narrative interview, <clears throat> isn't a subject, tell me what happened. You're asking them to relate an entire sequence or set of events. This is a second point we need to make. So it's not a single answer, but you're actually putting the subject in a position where they have to construct a certain amount of deception. And in their construction, they've got to put together facts that they think can't be challenged or not likely to be challenged by the interviewer. Where we look for is those energized spots where there are risks involved for the subject particularly time and people and places. So once we have that, they've committed, right? They've, they've got their, their skin in the game, if you will. They've got their statement. Now you're going back as an interviewer and you're testing and challenging that, which doubles or triples the cognitive load, making this stand out. This is what Vry, Fisher, Lull, Leo, and, and Bull have found. That in, when you do the, the theme th type of thing we call theme development, you've heard called theme development, you're again missing the opportunity to actually activate those hot spots where there might be deception. And so the, they did several studies and they looked at subjects and they were being interrogated and they looked at the difference in the accusatory style and the information gathering format. And in every situation, in information and gathering format, the subject was under a great deal of cognitive load. Interviewers saw more cues they provided points for topics for follow-on questions, okay? And the subject was unable to sustain that deception and increase the cognitive load again. So again, go look at the information narrative-based type format. Tell me what happened, describe the events of day, how do you usually close up, describe the accident, give me in depth the conversation, and you get that subject to give you that dialogue, creating that deception structure. Then when you look for the spike points, listen to the missing time, the people and places, that's where you pinpoint as an interviewer and you stay with those three or four pointed areas. Watch the lie signs energize. When they did this, the interviewer's accuracy increased dramatically and in accurately spotting the points of deception. So if you want lie signs to show up, energize the lies. Great to be with you again. Please connect with me on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, um, Instagram. Uh, I communicate through those, send you a lot of information, some good content about interviewing tips, some more that you would like to, to uh, attach on to. Also, that's where I um, give you information on how to get into upcoming classes. Be sure to go to my website 
lieguy.com and sign on there uh, to the Lieguy list so you can get uh, information about classes and also specifically how to host classes for your agency. We'll talk, I'll discuss with you your needs, create a customized design program just for your agency. So we'll see you till the next time. Please be safe and we'll see you back for tip number 86.